let's take a trip in our Wayback Machine and see if you remember this clip. So when people ask why you support Donald Trump, you just tell them. He's going to take our economy from here to here. <laughs> what about this moment? So my understanding is you want to clear the air because you think you're being unfavorably compared to Donald Trump. Don't get me wrong, Conan. I agree with a lot he says. A lot. Like 90% of what he says. I'm like, this guy gets it. <laughs> okay. Or there's always this music video. Yeah, they've come out over the last eight or nine years all targeting President Donald Trump. It has been extreme to say the least. And it's hard not to think about all this messaging, all this rage, all these attacks on President Trump, all rhetorical, but of course we now know that rhetorical turned into real world violence. Donald Trump was grazed by a bullet. He survived stronger than ever. But what about Hollywood? What kind of responsibility does Hollywood have when we talk about the rhetoric against Donald Trump, the, the culture that Donald Trump is Adolf Hitler 2.0, that he's an existential threat to our democracy, that he's a fascist, that he's a dictator, that America won't exist anymore if he becomes the president once more. Never mind the fact that he was president for four years and none of this actually happened. You would think that would just push aside all these conversations about what a monster he is. And you could say, well, I didn't agree with this policy or he's such a blustery guy. I don't really want him in the White House. Those are all valid complaints. I get that. You could disagree with everything that he does. But this was far, far worse. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. You know, at the beginning of the whole Trump moment, which we're still in apparently, Meryl Streep gave a speech and she was decrying Donald Trump at one of these award shows. Again, this is early in his arrival, his ascendancy into the political space. And she talked about him bearing his fangs. It was a very, very pointed imagery she was using. And she's a great actress, of course, who can deliver it better than Meryl Streep. But I think over the last few years, Hollywood has bared its fangs and not just against Donald Trump, but anyone who might support him. Which brings us, of course, to the assassination attempt just a few days ago. I was very curious to see how Hollywood re would react to this. Now, you know, they may hate him. They may want to vote against him. They may write huge checks against Trump and for President Biden, but they couldn't condone what happened, could they? Or would they, would they remain silent? And, you know, for the most part, that's exactly what they did. They remained silent. And they certainly were for the first 24 hours. I didn't see much of anything in the way of messaging or tweets or social media posts about the situation. And then slowly they started trickling in. You had John Cryer going on an extended rant about gun control. And by the way, I'd believe more about their gun control wishes if they weren't appointing soft on crime prosecutors across the country. Kind of falls on deaf ears when you have that situation. Stephen King finally weighed in. Again, he played the gun control card. No, oh my gosh, my potential president was just attacked. That's a terrible thing. I don't agree with any of his policies, but we can't have that in America. What a terrible day. Nothing like that. And that's basically what we've seen over the last day or two. Either silence or something snarky about gun control or something more macabre. And I think when you talk about that category, you got to talk about Tenacious D. And if you don't know that name or that band, it is a band. It's a kind of a farcical band there. They have a tongue in their cheek when they play their music. And it's Jack Black and Kyle Gass. They've been a duo for quite some time. I understand that their music's actually pretty good. Jack Black's a talented fellow. And they were in Sydney, Australia just hours ago playing a concert. And it turns out it was Kyle Gass's birthday. So Jack presented him with a birthday cake and asked him to make a wish. Make a wish, Canada. Don't miss Trump next time. <laughs> Thank you. Now, <laughs> I'm all for a good joke. I really am. And I think that even there has been some recent political humor tied to the assassination. One, one of the bits was by Tyler Fisher, a very funny fellow. And I think he struck the right tone about it and the fact that Trump was had survived and is fine, obviously it makes it easier to joke about now. The show, they really, the bullet was really weak. They couldn't do it. Right? What a weak bullet. I just, that's all I had to do. 
Just, right? I said, sir, you need a bulletproof vest. I said, I think I'll bring my earlobe. Think of that. Right? But they're not joking about this. That's in their hearts. Why would you say something like that? It's going to be fascinating to see how Jack Black's career moves on after this. Listen, he'll face no punishment. Hollywood will maybe give him an attaboy behind the scenes. But, you know, fans who may have liked Jack Black's work or appreciated it or said, you know, I don't care about his politics. He's a pretty funny, talented guy. If you haven't seen Bernie, I highly recommend it. One of his best films. It's a more of a dramatic presentation. But after this, just hours after a presidential assassination attempt, we, we, we can't put our politics aside and say how evil and wrong it is to take a shot at the president or president-elect or potential future president. My gosh, if someone attacked President Biden, I'd be outraged. I want to know why did the security fail? What's going on? Let's get the person. Let's solve the situation. Oh my gosh, President Biden's hurt, but he's okay. Those are all normal thoughts that we all should have as Americans. This should have been a galvanizing moment, especially as President Trump just rose up and raised his hand and told his followers that he was okay. An amazing American moment, iconic instantly. But we didn't get that from Hollywood. And I, I fear the next couple of days, it may get worse. We've already seen the journalists behaving just in an atrocious fashion. First, they couldn't describe it as an assassination attempt. There were outlets saying that Trump fell, that he was startled by loud noises. I mean, this is after everyone in the world knew what happened, but they played dumb because they couldn't give him that moment because they feared that moment might change the election, might help Donald Trump. Instead of just saying, I'm a journalist, I'll just tell it like it is and let my readers decide. You know, I got into the work I do because I loved Hollywood. I loved movies. I've been doing this for 20 plus years. I, I basically changed my entire life to do the work I do. I was an art major back in the day. I've got three art degrees I don't use. And I decided, you know what? I want to be a movie critic. And if it's going to take year after year of doing mundane work, covering town hall meetings to get to a place where I could actually review movies, that's worth it, man. And now I've run my own website. I've got my own podcast. I've created this weird career where I'm covering Hollywood. I'm doing exactly what I want to do. And, you know, I've interviewed some of the biggest actors in the world, Will Smith, Kevin Spacey, Tom Hanks, the Giants, and I have enjoyed it. And it's been great to meet them and to commiserate with them and to talk about movies. And I look at Hollywood today and they can't even raise their hand and say, this is wrong. This can't happen in America. We don't like Donald Trump, but boy, this is absolutely the wrong way to deal with a problem like Donald Trump. You know, Donald Trump is a unique individual. He can be cruel. He can be cutting. He could be crass. Absolutely. But I think what Hollywood did, instead of decrying him, instead of critiquing him, instead of challenging his ideas, they got down to the gutter with him. And they actually behaved much worse than I could have ever imagined. So what happens next? Will we see that Apprentice movie that is the hit piece on Donald Trump? Will the stars stop attacking him for five minutes or at least ratchet down their rhetoric? George Takei hasn't. He's on Twitter. He's been raging against Trump ever since that assassination attempt. What will late night TV look like in the days and weeks following the assassination attempt? Can they pull off their... Hitler, fascist, dictator shtick? Is something within them going to tell them, hey, maybe this contributed to a culture that helped spark a young man to climb a building and take a pot shot of the president? You know, I look at the last eight or nine years and I'm sometimes I'm ashamed to cover Hollywood. I, I get that sometimes on social media. How do you cover this industry? You know what? I often do it like this. I have to cover my nose because what they're saying, what they're doing, what they're sharing it's gross, it's wrong, and it's hurting the country. And if there's anything good that come out of this horrible incident, maybe some stars will start to realize that, not from a pragmatic point of view, not worrying they may lose a few fans, they may lose a couple of gigs, or something like that, because it's wrong. I don't mind that stars are politically active. I don't mind that they open their wallets and purses to help the Democrats. That's perfectly fine. It's the American way. But boy, can you ratchet down the ugliness? Can you tone it down a bit? Can you realize that half the audience that you're talking to maybe likes Donald Trump or likes his party or doesn't want to hear him called a fascist or a dictator or the fact that we've had four years of Donald Trump and nothing of the kind actually happened? Hollywood, please 
clean up your act, or this is going to get much worse in the culture, with or without another assassination attempt. We all deserve better. You should do better.